Welcome everyone to Geology 204-205, Geology of Colorado at Regis University. This is a summer travel course and we it runs from July 25th to August 7th, 2019. Uh, in this video I just want to give you a quick introduction to the course, a quick introduction to the basic physical geography of, of Colorado. Um, so we'll be meeting July 25th, 26th, and 27th on campus uh, in the lab, and then we'll be on the road July 28th to August 7th. We'll return to Denver on August 7th. Um, this course satisfies the requirements, uh, the core requirements for a natural science course with a lab in Regis College. It also satisfies the requirements of a physical geology course for environmental science majors. Um, so in the course, we'll be on campus those, those three days, and then we've got 10 days in the field. Um, we'll be studying geologic systems, geologic processes, mostly physical surface processes, and landforms. Um, we'll also practice rock and mineral ID and fun things like that. Two years ago, we ran this course in May, and we were hit by two huge snowstorms on the trip. Uh, which made for an exciting but sometimes uncomfortable experience. Um, this year we're running in August, so I don't anticipate any major snowstorms, but um, you should be prepared for the elements. We will be camping uh, at some times at high elevations, places where it can freeze any night of the year, so it could get very cold. In fact, last year we ran this trip in August, and um, we did have a few very cold nights when we were camping at higher elevations. Um, we'll also be camping in, at lower elevations in, in desert, and so it can be quite warm. Um, so we can have you know, thunderstorms, torrential rain, it can be hot, dry, cold. Um, so you need to be prepared for the elements. So make sure to look over your, um, your list of, of gear to bring, and make sure you have you know, rain gear, uh, clothes for warm uh, weather and cold weather, um, and, a, and a sleeping bag and tent. Um, but we will have a lot of fun. Uh, this is always a, a really good trip, and uh, we should learn a lot. We'll be stopping in a lot of really cool places. Okay, so here's a few reminders, some things you need to keep in mind, um, and things you need to do before we meet on July 25th on campus. Um, so the first thing is make sure you obtain a copy of the textbook. So the book we'll be using is Roadside Geology of Colorado by Williams and Chronic. You can pick up a copy of this pretty much anywhere uh, online, on Amazon or other online bookstores. Pretty much any bookstore in Colorado should have it, and uh, you should be able to get a copy for between $15 and $20. Make sure, though, that you get the third edition. That's the latest edition. Um, previous editions did not have color illustrations and color maps, but this one does, and so it's a good bit better uh, than the old editions. So make sure to get a copy of uh, Roadside Geology of Colorado. You should also read the first chapter. So read chapter one in Roadside Geology of Colorado uh, as soon as possible. That gives you a nice sort of intro um, into the basics of, of geology and a little bit of you know, the geologic history of Colorado. The second thing you should do before class, before our first class meeting, is log into World Class um, and find the Geology 204 page. Um, and on there, there's a series of videos like this one. Uh, the videos are on my playlist on YouTube, so you can watch those even without logging into World Class. But um, you, you'll watch those videos. I think there's 11 videos that kind of give you a crash course in the basics of geology and uh, some of the stuff in the trip. Um, and then there's an online quiz uh, that, that accompanies each one. So make sure to take those online quizzes. Um, it's, it's really basic, five question, multiple choice, just to make sure that you've watched the video and understood it. It's not a bad idea to take notes while you watch the videos of, of you know, things that, that's new, that you find new and interesting. Those will help you with those quizzes. You get to take each quiz twice, so um, if you don't do so well, you can go back and revisit the video and retake the quiz. Um, so there's no reason you shouldn't um, do, well, do well on those quizzes. Okay, so make sure to do that read the chapter, watch the videos, take the quizzes, and then we will meet on Thursday, July 25th. We will meet in 204 Science Building at 9 a.m. So please be there and be on time, and we'll review uh, the content from these things, and then we'll start on some new uh, materials. 
Okay, so I want to just talk about um, some basic physical geography of Colorado just to get us oriented and kind of familiar with, um, you know, where we're headed on this trip. Um, so Colorado is a big boxy state. It's one of the big boxy states out in the western U.S. And the reason it's so boxy is because the, the state boundaries are, are defined only by latitude and longitude. So right, latitude and longitude are the imaginary grid uh, that's placed on the earth. Uh, lines of latitude run east to west, and they're your angular distance north and south of the equator. So the northern boundary of Colorado is 31 degrees, I'm sorry, 41 degrees north latitude, and the southern boundary is 37 degrees north latitude. Um, and then lines of longitude, which intersect at the poles, they're not parallel, which is why these boundaries, which is why Colorado is not a perfect rectangle, um, it's more of a trapezoid. Um, so the eastern boundary of Colorado is about 102 degrees west longitude, and the western boundary is about 109 degrees west longitude, so we get this nice box. One of only three states whose uh, physical feature, whose, whose boundaries are, are not defined by any physical features, only latitude and longitude. Utah and Wyoming are the others. Um, every other state has at least part of their boundary defined by a river or a mountain range or a coastline or some kind of natural feature. Um, but what's interesting about this map is it shows elevation. So all it's really showing is elevation and there's some, some roads and things uh, on here as well. Um, but if you look down here at the legend, uh, the legend shows you uh, that in color we see the, the different elevations. So uh, our lowest elevations are in uh, darker green and then as we go through lighter green and yellow and light brown and dark brown we get to higher elevations and then our highest elevations are in gray and white um, so just by seeing the elevation above sea level um, we really get an idea of the shape of the landscape and some of the physical features so um, I'm gonna draw if you look at this map just a, just take a glance at it uh, you can see that we've got basically three big regions of the state. So if I draw a line down here um, along what's called the front range of the Rockies, um, we see that we're dividing two big regions over here. So over here uh, to the east, uh, everything's sort of lower elevation and it's generally flatter. Um, and that's the high plains. I'm going to put an HP there for high plains. Um, in the middle of the state here, uh, I'm going to draw separated from some of the western portions here. Um, by just drawing another red line. Uh, and this is our sort of Rocky Mountain region, right? This is the Southern Rocky Mountains. I'm just going to put an RM in the middle. And this has our highest mountains, right? You can see all those, those white and gray areas. Those are our highest peaks. And these are formed by basically pushing rocks together and thrusting them up, right? So we have all these folded and faulted mountain ranges indicated by the, by the white uh, areas of highest elevation. Um, and then if we look over here to the west, um, we've got our Colorado Plateau, right? So a little lower elevation than our high mountain peaks. Um, and we've got sort of, it looks flatter, but it, we've got like these flat topped, this is canyon country, right? So we've got flat top mesas and plateaus and deep canyons in between. Uh, that sort of classic uh, western, uh, western landscape. Um, so those are our three major divisions of the state. Uh, according to you know physical features or topography, um, but we can sort of further subdivide this if we look a little closer at this map. So first off, in the Rocky Mountain region, we've got these intermontane parks, uh, which are sort of flat areas ringed by mountains. So here we've got North Park, and then we've got Middle Park here, <clears throat> and then we've got South Park, which is right there. Uh, and then we've got the San Luis Valley, which is a really, really big one. These are fascinating places. We'll talk about how these form uh, in the class, uh, but they're really beautiful landscapes because you've got this flat country um, surrounded by really, really high mountains. They're fairly unique to Colorado, at least uh, we've, got, we've got really big uh, intermontane parks in Colorado. Um, we can also subdivide this if I could draw a line more or less around here. Uh, this part uh, of the color, it's not really part of the Colorado Plateau. This is called the Wyoming Basin, um, and it's got a lot of down warped rocks. We're not going to make it up, it's pretty far to the northwest. We're not going to make it up to the Wyoming Basin on this trip. It's a little different from the Colorado Plateau. 
And then the other interesting section of the state is right here, this mountain range here. Um, this is the San Juan Mountains, SJ. Um, and the San Juans are a little different. Up here in the Rockies, we've got these folded and faulted mountains uh, that were pushed together and, and thrust upward. The San Juans are volcanic. They're old volcanoes. Um, so we get very different landforms, very different rocks, uh, and a very different landscape down in the San Juans, um, which we will visit. The other things we can see from this map, um, we can see the big rivers that drain the state. So there's basically three major rivers that drain uh, the state of Colorado, that all this snow melt coming off the Rockies uh, flows out of the state. So down here we've got the Arkansas River, and that flows off into Kansas. And then up here we've got the South Platte River that flows through Denver, um, and it joins into the Platte River, uh, which flows into Nebraska. There's another tributary up here. And then um, on the west side of the Rockies, we've got um, the Colorado River, which comes out this way, and a major tributary of that is the uh, Gunnison River, which flows into the Colorado River, and those go off into Utah. Um, we've got another really cool river up here called the Yampa River, um, which is more or less here, and that joins the Colorado farther down into Utah. It's another tributary of the Colorado. Um, so what we see, if we follow the highest peaks, um, I'll, try, I'll use purple here, if we follow the highest peaks of the mountains, it forms the Continental Divide. And what that means is it divides these major river basins. Uh, so everything on the east side of the divide flows into either uh, the Platte River or the Arkansas River, and those flow into the Missouri River and then into the Mississippi and then into the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Um, everything on the west side of the divide, the highest peaks of the mountains, will flow into one of the tributaries of the Colorado, um, and the Colorado River flows uh, down into Utah and then all the way down to the Gulf of Cortez uh, and the Pacific Ocean. Um, so the, the Rocky Mountains, the spine of the Rocky Mountains going through North America divide um, our rivers that flow into the two um, great oceans. Um, so. Uh, this, is, this gives you sort of a, a general view of the sort of landforms and landscapes and where we're going to go. On the next slide, I'll show you um, the route that we're going to take. Okay, so here's a different map of Colorado. We can tell it's Colorado because of the big box that I'm quite sloppily drawing along the boundaries of the state right here. Um, and this is a different map. Instead of showing elevation in colors, uh, this is this shows topography or landforms using some pen and ink symbols, but this one has some labels and some other cool things. So I'm going to use this to illustrate the route that we're going to take uh, on the trip this summer. Uh, so we're going to start right here in Denver, um, and that uh, we're going to start there. We'll, we'll meet, of course, three days: the 25th, 26th, and 27th of July, and then we're going to leave on July 28th early in the morning. And we're going to drive down, uh, mostly down Interstate 25, and we're going to stop here around Pikes Peak. So Pikes Peak is right here. It's one of those 14,000 foot high peaks in Colorado. Um, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to take a little hike on uh, the Pikes Peak Batholith. So that's part of this big blob of granite uh, that, that makes up Pikes Peak and a lot of the surrounding regions. And we're going to get a nice view of the Front Range Mountains of Colorado from there. Um, so we might have lunch up there and do something like that. Um, then uh, on that first day, we're going to continue driving down um, past Pueblo, down I-25, and we're going to go to the Spanish Peaks. And that's where we're going to camp our first night. So the Spanish Peaks are really interesting volcanic features. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll camp up there and look at some of the landforms that we get, uh, some intrusive um, igneous landforms. Uh, then uh, the next morning we'll drive over La Veda Pass and into the San Luis Valley and we will camp the next night at the Great Sand Dunes National Park. It's a really beautiful spot with really interesting geology in the San Luis Valley, plus you've got these sand dunes, these 800 foot high sand dunes um, that make for incredible uh, scenery as well as some really interesting uh, features of how wind moves sediment around. Um, then we'll drive across the San Luis Valley and we will go um, through the San Juan Mountains, the volcanic San Juans, 
and we're going to go up uh, north of Durango and we'll camp just outside of the town of Uray, Colorado. Uray is the Switzerland of Colorado, beautiful glacial valleys, um, waterfalls, glaciers, high peaks, U-shaped valleys, really, really interesting stuff. And we'll talk about number one, the volcanic San Juan Mountains, and number two, how glaciers sculpt mountains. Um, so we'll spend a couple of nights in Uray doing that stuff. And then we'll head up to Grand Junction. So we'll probably go someplace like this. And then um, Grand Junction is right here. And just outside of the city of Grand Junction is Colorado National Monument. And it's a beautiful um, little plateau that's been uplifted and shows a lot of um, sedimentary geology. We'll look at lots of different um, different layers in the sediments and what was going on through the history of Colorado over millions and millions of years. Um, from there, we will head over to Grand Mesa, which is right over here next door. Uh, Grand Mesa is the largest flat-topped mountain in the world, and it's covered with a very hard rock called basalt, and that's a volcanic rock that spewed out um, and covered the softer sediments, leading to this really interesting mesa. There's lakes up there. Um, there's all sorts of landslide activity and bogs and all sorts of other cool features that we'll look at um, when we're on top of Grand Mesa. Um, then we'll come down uh, off of Grand Mesa. We might uh, quickly peek at Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, which is a really interesting uh, gorge. Um, and then we'll head into the Elk Mountains, which are right here uh, near Crested Butte, Colorado. Uh, the Elk Mountains are volcanic, um, but there's also some really interesting stuff that we can do on some day trips there. Um, so we'll look at volcanic mountains, we'll look at glaciers again. Um, there's some interesting coal mining as we go just, uh, just north um, there. And so um, we'll, we'll consider a lot of really interesting features um, there. And so that'll get us to August uh, 7th, and then August 7th we will drive back uh, to Denver and finish up our trip. So um, don't forget, we will meet on July 25th, 9 a.m. in the Science Building, uh, room 204, and we'll begin our course then. Don't forget to read chapter one of the textbook, watch all the, uh, the videos, and take the online quizzes. All right, see you then.